I'm here with Dr. Lawrence Baker from Stanford Medical School, and we're going to talk about healthcare costs or uh, healthcare economics, which you're uh, you're an expert in. I like to spend a lot of time you, thinking you about health be. economics <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah. So, so all of these charts, which all seem to have a, a similar shape here, these are essentially measures of how much we're spending on on healthcare. So, this first one right here was this total health spending, 1960 to 2009. Yep. This is the United States. This is the United States. This is data that's compiled by the federal government every year since, well, 1960 in this figure. And this is, is this adjusted? This isn't adjusted for inflation. That's not adjusted for anything. That's the total dollar value that the, the folks in the federal government who like to calculate this number have come up with for the amount we spend on health care in a year. Okay, so someone looking just at this data point might say, okay, maybe it's not inflation adjusted. Maybe the inflation curve is also growing up growing at some rate here but yep. the, the absolute numbers do seem to be large you're saying by by 2000 by 2019 I guess it's already well 2009 we're already several years past we're that past that yeah. we're two and a half trillion dollars just to get make yep. people clear what we're talking about because this is in billions this is two thousand four hundred eighty six billion <laughs> that's so right. that's that's, that's two point four trillion dollars yep. and then that's projected to almost almost double by 2019 that's right. we're, we're all, you know, and, and our GDP is on the order of $15 trillion. So it's, it's a, right. significant, a significant chunk of everything that we produce. That's a big and, chunk of everything we produce. And, yeah, and, and going, up, going up rapidly, you know, hard to predict a little bit, but all the trends are up. And wow. so we're worried about it. And this, this is on a per capita basis. So, so I guess there's, there's two ways to think about why costs are going up. Mm -hmm. One is is that maybe maybe you just have a lot more people. Right. And, and they're, or that on a per person basis, you are spending more. Right. And this chart seems to imply the latter. This says on a per person basis we're spending more. Still not inflation adjusted in this. Still not chart, inflation adjusted. But uh, going from a hundred dollars or so in nineteen sixty to eight thousand dollars in the last couple of years. And you know, you can see the trend since say two thousand and five in there, it's up and it's up pretty steeply. Right. Uh, just in the last little bit. Right. Headed for maybe thirteen or fourteen thousand. Thirteen or fourteen thousand. That's a nice subcompact car one could one could buy. Uh, yeah, I suppose you know, so. Not to not to say what's more important. And then this is so th this next chart right over here is actually that calculation as a percentage of GDP. And to me this is a, maybe one of the most relevant things because that 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 adjusts it for things. Not it doesn't directly adjust for inflation, but it says, look, of as a percentage of all of the goods and services as an economy that we're doing, this is a percentage. Right. So this is this is an interesting one right here. So in 1960, roughly five percent of everything that all the Ameri all the goods and services that Americans produced, one in twenty of that of our energies was spent towards healthcare. Right. And now it's looking like it's closely. It, it, in the next few years, it's going to it's, it's going to be approaching twenty percent. It's already in the upper teens. It's in, yeah, it's well, it's past fifteen percent, sixteen percent, and we're headed up. Um, you know, the last year or so maybe it was a l little slow growth, but you can see the trend over the last decade or two decades. It's up, up and up. So you're right. As we as when health economists, when people in who, who think about this uh, more deeply want to think about healthcare spending, two and a half trillion is an interesting number. Eight thousand is an interesting right. number. But this one captures population growth to a large extent, captures right. inflation. Uh, and the fact that we're spending a dollar one seventh, roughly, of our productive capacity on healthcare is right. an interesting and, and closely approaching you know, one. Actually, it's already one sixth and approaching one fifth. Fifth, yeah. Of of everything that we do is is about uh, healthcare. Yeah. And and I guess I mean th there's a couple of things there. Maybe maybe we're getting healthier. I guess is one possibility. Um, or maybe we aren't, and then we, this something's weird. Well, that's the really interesting question. You know, where we think about why this is going up, but at the end of the day, you're happy if it's if we're spending this much, and if we're spending more than other countries, we're spending more than we did last year. If we're getting healthier because of it, or if we're getting happier, interesting question. If we want to count happiness, it right, doesn't right. make us healthy. But if we're getting something we value, and we're getting worried, and we get worried if we there are many sure that's forms happening. of happiness that do not make you healthy. I think that's right. <laughs> Though this is, uh, at the end of the day, this <laughs> may be our biggest question. Broader, <laughs> some will di act directly against your health, but <laughs> yes. but uh, and and that that goes that goes that goes straight into this chart. What you're talking about is like, well, you know, may maybe we should or maybe we shouldn't compare ourselves to other countries, and and this is comparing ourselves to other countries. So this chart right over here, this is the blue graph. So we are this light blue. Yep. I'll do it in that same. So this is us. This is the United States right over here. Yep. That is us, the United States. And if we compare to other developed countries with, I guess, not too different to demographics in terms yeah, of... Yeah, overall developed countries, industrialized countries, countries where the standard of living is in pretty good shape. Right, um, right. And they have they have a broad, you know, it's not a homogenous... 
Not entirely homogenous. So people country. will argue, will say the U.S. is is more diverse than right. some the United countries Kingdom in Europe, is quite is quite diverse. Pretty diverse, diverse countries diverse generally, country and, now, and you know, certainly countries with immigration issues that the U.S. Right. has, countries with lower income and higher income populations that the U.S. has. So they're pretty diverse. Right. And so the, I mean, when you look at this, this is actually maybe this is the the, the, the real chart to look at because this is this gives you the percentage of GDP, but also puts it in context of other countries, mm -hmm. and that's where they're all kind of bundled around in this. You know, I don't know, at the low end, it, what is this? The, actually, the UK, I didn't realize, is actually at the low end as a percentage of GDP, all the way at, at France is at the high end of GDP. And yeah. yeah, so I've I've done a little picking and yeah. choosing of the European yeah. countries here. There are some that are a little higher, but nobody yeah. comes close to the US. Right. Um, these are the big ones. UK is the lowest in the world, really, of the developed countries, the European countries. Um, and, and France and Germany, Canada, common comparators to the US at 10 or 11%. So we're... 50% uh, higher, 60% higher than than those. Double what what's going on in the UK. And do we know why why we're doing this, or uh, you know, it, it, are we getting? I guess where is that going? Where where are we spending money that these other countries aren't? Right. So two places ultimately the economics of it would say if you're spending more than somebody else, you're it's about how much stuff you're buying, what kind of things you're buying, and right. then the price that you're paying right. per thing. So we're talking either about prices or quantities. Right, right, times right. Q. So uh, it's a little bit of both. If you compare us across countries, um, we spend, we buy more of some kinds of services than right. other countries buy. There's um, some interesting comparisons. So like we might get more MRIs per person or something like we that. Get, we certainly do get more MRIs per person. It's kind of interesting. It's not that we have more doctors per capita, say, right. or more hospital beds per capita. It's not that we get more primary care visits in the U.S. It's actually true that in many European countries you get more primary care visits, more time with your primary care doctor than we get in the U.S. But it's... Uh, you know, if you're if you're picking a poster child, it might be the MRI or something more sophisticated, right. some of the more expensive specialist right. visits, uh, lots of tests and and things like that that uh, we buy in the United States that you don't buy in Europe, and uh, that drives up our healthcare costs. So it's, it's definitely so we definitely are buying more, and, and and it's costing us more per. And the price is also different in the United States, right. and this is there's some people who've done studies of this, and there's always little bits of debate about how you define these prices exactly. But right. um, you know, we pay doctors. Uh, and if you're finding doctors' annual incomes, they're going to be higher in the United States. That okay. is to say, we're paying, in some sense, a higher price for a year of work from a doctor than they pay in Europe. We're paying a higher price for our hospital administration, for our uh, staff in the hospitals and things. We're tending right. to pay more. So we pay, we buy more things. We tend to buy more of the more expensive things. Right. And we tend to pay a higher price. You know, roughly, uh, how much of, of, a, of, a, of the healthcare dollar goes towards? Um, salaries versus drugs versus things like MRIs and, and, and the kind of fixed costs like like MRIs and hospital and beds and things like that. Yeah, so some of this you can figure out. We yeah. I mean, we could almost put another slide up on yeah. here uh, on the figure there or on the on the screen there. Um, the U.S. health accounts will tell you some things like doctors and hospitals and drugs. Drugs, uh, you know, ten or fifteen percent, a little less than that. Okay, I'd have to go back and look at the data on the on physicians, but you know, physicians, you know, let's say that uh, hospitals and physicians are 20 or 30 per I, I, I 20 actually, okay, I well actually hesitate to give you the, okay. the number. It's not 90%. It's, it's not 90%. When we say hospitals and physicians, that, so that includes outpatient and inpatient. Yeah, instead. you know, there's, so there's lots of ways that these health accounts get broken up. Um, right. You know, physicians, uh, hospitals, emergency departments, right. different kinds of equipment and things that get purchased, and there's research, and there's buildings, right. and all that kind of so stuff. So, but just physician pay, once again, none of these things do make up the bulk of it. I mean, we had a video about drug pricing, but drug pricing by itself is not the reason why we're, no. we're, we're out here. And physician pay by itself is not the reason why we're out there, or even having more, it, all of these are contributing. It seems like we're, it's, all of these we're getting mix. more of and we're, we're, we're paying for. It's, it's a mix. I mean, at the end of the day, it's going to be a bunch of things like this all thrown together. We buy more stuff. We tend to buy more expensive stuff. We buy it from people who we pay a lot to. We buy more specialist visits. For right. example, in the U.S., we pay specialists a, a higher annual salary than we pay generalists, and that comes out in the prices. Uh, they don't do that in Europe? Europe does pay more, but right. everybody's shifted down. All the physicians right. and are so shifted down, and I think the specialists are probably shifted down more uh, in Europe than the generalists are. 
I um, see. We pay more for our prescription drugs here. We pay more for... Now, what are we getting in, 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 in terms of other than, you know, more Mercedes in the doctor's parking lot? No, no, I'm kidding. I'm yeah. kidding. No, no, no. It's, although you do see a lot of them. It seems to be the car dealership. of choice yeah. when, you, when I visit the doctor. <laughs> yeah. uh, but but w what what is... And I'm not saying that my wife's the physician, and obviously we all work with many, so and they, no, they, they've worked of, very hard, so I'm not, right, going yes. to, I'm not going to say that they're make any statement about their underpay or overpay um, and as be, especially relative to some people on you in the finance world I would say that they're definitely underpaid <laughs> possibly yes yes yes, yes. They're, they're above Mercedes <laughs> <in> that world <laughs> right, yeah, um, but but and, and so are we getting anything in, in exchange for this are we getting less wait times are we getting a better access to our doctors what are we getting or what do we know about that well, so this is the debate. This is in, in maybe a microcosm, one of the big debates we're having in the U.S. right now. We're spending more every year. We're spending more than other countries. If it was clear, we were twice as well off, and twice we're, we're as happy as Britain. we're growing faster, too, and we're growing faster. And we're growing, yeah, yeah, so it depends on how you Looks. look at the timing, okay. but we're yeah, growing sure. a little faster in some years. Yeah. Um, you know, our health care costs go up 10%. If, we're, if we knew we were 10% happier this year with our health care system, we'd be happy. And and that's the big debate. There are some cases some where the U.S., uh, you can. There are things you can point to. We have fewer waiting lines for some services, and right. some of the countries that keep the costs down have more lines. You know, but it's not all. It's also not the case that they have waiting lines for everything, and the really serious stuff doesn't tend to have long waiting I lines. See. We um, get we get easier access to some of the high tech stuff, which right. we like, and so right. that drives up our spending, but maybe makes us happy. At but it some may level. it may it may or may not lead to better outcomes. So it makes us happy that we feel like we're getting better customer service instead of waiting three weeks instead of waiting three months for a procedure. We're getting it in three weeks, which would make me happier. I mean, yep. objectively, it I would be much does. happier about that. Right. Um, but. What what happens when we look at the overall outcomes? Uh, you know, life expectancy and and people dying from heart disease or you know whatever. Well, this is kind of a mixed bag. There are right. some of the the most commonly cited figures are cases where the U.S. doesn't do as well as some European countries. We and usually it's you know we spend a lot more. We don't do better right. on life expectancy. We don't do better on infant mortality. Uh, there are some cases where the U.S. does does really well, especially things where. Uh, access to the high-end stuff yeah. can make a difference, and so there are some situations where it looks like we buy uh, the kinds of things that are really going to make us healthier. But uh, it's not uh, not across the board. And some of the really interesting ones are cases where there's fairly inexpensive stuff that looks like it would work well and, and improve outcomes. And sometimes we're not doing the inexpensive stuff that other countries are doing, and it's coming out to maybe hurt us in our outcomes. So there's a uh, you know we wouldn't be having the debate if it were clear if we were clearly better off. But it's really the case that in only some of the measures do we end up better off. We don't always right. vaccinate our kids more. We don't always get people screened more for cancers and things like that. But um, you know, sometimes we do. So there right. are cases, of, there are success stories here. Now, and now one are, thing that, that comes here. that's interesting about looking at this chart a little bit deeper is that it doesn't look like this is something that, you know, since the American Revolution that we've been spending double as a percentage of GDP relative to everyone else. I mean, if I just look at this chart right here, it seems like us in Canada, we were right along, very similar to each other to about the early 70s. And then, but we were still in kind of that pack with the Germany and France. I guess to, for the, relative to the UK, we actually always been have been higher. But mm -hmm. then right around, I mean, right around this time period there, I don't know, late seventies, early eighties. That's, that's where we really started to break off. What I mean, was there some policy shift there? Or? So there's not a tangible, uh, specific policy shift. What starts happening in the U.S. there is we start adopting and we start shifting toward the higher end stuff more. And some of that's the population. That, that's decided when the to technology started to really get. I think that's mainly the story. You know, we started to to really the the research and things, the development that went on in the in the world really from 1940, 50, 60 started to produce the capacity to do new and expensive things, and the U.S. grabbed those, and other countries in the world were less uh, quick to grab them. Maybe you could say more careful. Maybe you'd say too careful, right. too slow. Uh, but the U.S. As, as you see there, really quickly started to put up specialized hospitals, started to buy the fancy equipment, and uh, you know you can see what kind of came out of it. Cool, and to some degree, probably the whole world benefited from that because you're you are going back to the drug pricing or the you know the, the yeah. MRI ma manufacturers are able to get those returns and. Hopefully, m much of that they're able to reinvest and not spend too much on other things. But, but yeah, it is it is fueling. Yeah, some of the innovation. If if you know, there's always these kinds of questions that swirl around here. If the U.S. pays a lot of money and that comes back into innovation that everybody benefits from, including us, maybe it's okay. Right. Um, you know, I think there are people who debate whether we got enough innovation right. and enough benefits that's tangibly related to our spending to make right. our spending worth it. Um, but there are some cases where that probably happened, and so you know, there's some subtlety to the question, but. Yeah. You know, I always say if you're the Yankees and you're going to pay the huge amount for the 
for the big payroll and the big uh, stars, people expect you to win every time, and that's the kind of the U.S.'s challenge. We're going to pay the big bucks. We, we should show We really results. feel like we want to show results every time, and you know sometimes we do get the results, but it's not. not often it's not enough. ambiguous. It's not ambiguous. We're not winning the championship every every <laughs> right. year. Very very.